finding the minimum maximum values of a function, specifically functions where we're given a function, also like a boundary, a constraint, can be made a lot easier when we use Lagrange multipliers. And so what a Lagrange multiplier is, is that you know, we have our function, let's say we're taking in two variables, x and y. So we have our function f of x and y. We're also given a boundary, a constraint, g of x and y. And the formula for Lagrange multipliers is pretty easy, but it's not always obvious like how you implement the Lagrange multiplier, like the whole method behind it. And so what it says is that the gradient of f is equal to the gradient of g multiplied by a Lagrange multiplier lambda. And this is actually, you know, it's actually pretty cool because the gradient is a vector and, you know, both of these are vectors. And it's saying that the directions are going to be the same. So the direction of f is equal to the direction of the gradient of g. And the Lagrange multiplier lambda just lets us compare these values without having to worry about the magnitude. And it's just a scalar value. It's a bit of an aside, but I have an example question here for finding the minimum maximum values of Lagrange multipliers. And it says, find the a, b, and c values so that the volume 4 thirds pi abc of the ellipsoid, so we have an ellipsoid and we're trying to minimize the, the volume and the ellipsoid passes through the point p equals 1 to 1. Now there's a, bit of, there's a few steps you can do to get through most of Lagrange multiplier questions that ask you to find the minimum maximum values. And the first step is to find your function f, find f. Then you want to find g. So if you can take a look at this question, what do you think like what f would be? So since we're trying to find the volume, 4 thirds pi abc, we can see that our f is going to be taking in three variables, a, b, c. And that is going to be the volume. It's going to be 4 thirds pi abc. And our constraint, g, well, it basically says that the ellipsoid is described by this equation and it passes through there. So that kind of sounds like our, our boundary, our, our constraint. And so to find that, what we have to do is we have our x, our, sorry, we have our x, y, and z values for the point and we plug those into the ellipsoid. So we get, I'll plug in 1 into x squared, 2 into y squared, and another 1 into z squared. And that gives us 1 over a squared, because this is just 1 squared, plus now 2 squared is 4, so we get 4 over b squared plus 1 over c squared. Now, since this equals 1, it's actually, what you need to do is you need to equate the constraint to 0, or it's a lot easier when you constraint to 0. So we take the 1 over, and we get minus 1 equals 0, and what that is is g. That's going to be our g of a, b, C. And so even though we just plugged in x, y, and z values for the point p, it's actually now a function of a, b, and c because we've gotten rid of the x, y, and z. So this is our function f, and this is our constraint g. And those are the first two steps for taking down any, pretty much any Lagrange multiplier question. The next step is to find, because we were told that the you know, gradient of f equals the gradient of g lambda, now we find the gradient values. So we take the first derivative of f with respect to a. And if you have x, y, or z, let's say your function is, you know, takes in x, y, and z, then you would find f with respect to x. So f with respect to a is equal to, so we just take, since we treat b and c as constants, we just get 4 thirds pi bc, and we have our f with respect to b is very similar. And this is a key thing here is to recognize the similarity. And fc, 4 thirds pi a, b. So these are derivatives for f. And so for g, since we have lambda g, then we have lambda g a equals, and well, let's see here. So the derivative of this with respect to a, I mean the whole thing, but we're just, we only care about that, is going to be negative 2 divided by a cubed, and we multiply that by lambda. 
Then for the lambda g with respect to b, we get, so we have a 4 here. We're basically taking the same one as the ga, but times it by 4, so we get negative 8 lambda divided by b cubed. And lastly, we get g with respect to c. It's pretty much the same as the a squared, so we just get negative 2 lambda over the c cubed. All right. So we've actually done the majority of the question already. And the main part, since they're equal here, what this means is that these two equations are equal, these two equations are equal, and these two equations are equal. All right, so we found our function f, we found our function g, or our constraint g, and we took the derivatives of each variable. The step now is to try and equate them. So basically, we're given a lot of unknowns, and we're given a lot of functions. Or sorry, we're given a lot of, uh, a lot of unknowns and a lot of equations. Now we're trying to equate them in terms of 1. So we're trying to uh, equate and uh, get in terms, well actually I'll just, I'll just write, say it. We're trying to get all of these variables in, in terms of 1. So let's, let's try and get them, try to take a look at this. All right, so first off I see here that we have, you know, 4 thirds pi BC and this one is AC. So, so what happens if we had an A here and let's see, we have AC, so let's put a B here and a c here. So if I multiply this half by c, I also need to multiply that half by c. And look, a, b, c, so we add a b here, and we, since we added an a here, we add an a here. Again, because these functions are equal, we couldn't, they're, they're, we're just multiplying both halves of the equations by each one of those variables. And they're all separate equations too, so. So what we've done here now is we've said that 4 thirds pi we have BCA, so we can just say ABC, now we have ABC and ABC. So we've, we've said that this function is equal to this function, which is equal to this function, which means that this function is equal to that, which is equal to that. And that will help us solve for one of the variables. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we have 4 thirds pi ABC is equal to well, it's equal to this first one here. And since the a cancels out, so that turns it to squared. So we get negative 2 lambda over a squared because the a, which is also equal to this, which is negative 8. And remember, the b makes the b squared. Negative 8 lambda over b squared equal to negative 2 lambda over c squared. This last equation here. Okay, so. Most of this comes from experience. Like I, I recommend doing a, a fair number of these questions and you, you start to pick it up and it actually becomes really easy. This looks suspiciously similar to that. So we get negative two lambda a squared equals negative two lambda over c squared. Well, we obviously know that the negative two lambdas are gonna cancel. So that leaves us with one over a squared equals one over c squared, which could just be written as c squared equals a squared or a equals c. All right, so now we found it. We found a in terms of c. A equals c. Let's let's compare this with this function, or this sorry, not the function, the equation. So we get negative two lambda, where a squared equals negative eight lambda over b squared. All right, so again, the negative will cancel, the lambdas will cancel, and this two will replace the eight with a four. So then we get one over a squared equals 4 over b squared and we want to take the b over on this side and we want to take the a on that side so we get 4a squared equals b squared. All right and if we take the square root of both sides we get 2a equals b or we could write it as 4a squared equals b squared. So now we've solved a in terms of b, a in terms of c and we can actually solve the question now. So we remember from before the ellipse question was 1 over a squared plus 4 over b squared plus 1 over c squared minus 1 equals 0. Whoops, keep doing that. Shoot. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug it into the constraint equation. All right. Just to recap, we found our function f, we found our function g, we solved the gradients, then we also put the variables in terms of 1, 
And now the next step is to plug that one variable, the a, into the constraint equation. So what we do is we say, okay, we got the one over a squared. That's fine, we don't need to substitute. Now we have the b squared. So what is b squared equals? b squared equals four a squared from before here. So what we can do is we can just say four over four a squared plus, and we have one over c squared. Well, we know c squared just equals a squared. So one over, or sorry, a squared. Wow, that was easy. And then that minus one equals zero. Well, and this was really nice, the, whoever made this question. The fours cancel, which just gives us a one. So we have one plus one plus one gives us three over a squared minus one equals zero, or three equals one over a squared, which means that we can switch to one and the a, we get a squared equals three. So a equals the square root of three. All right, that's the question basically. Now that we've done that, we know that a equals, I'll write it down here, since a equals the square root of three, and since a equals c, then c equals the square root of three, and since a to a equals b, then b equals two times the square root of three. And that is our values a, b, and c, such that the volume will be minimized for that ellipsoid where the, that, like, where that point lies on that ellipsoid.